Hello, 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 everybody. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day today, and welcome to the Zach Cast. This is the first episode of a podcast that will hopefully go on for a while. The equipment we're starting out with right now is not the greatest. We've got the webcam, we've got a mic, got it hooked up to this uh, program called Riverside. It's pretty cool. Uh, so we're doing that, letting it work out. But uh, yeah, it's a new podcast, the Zach Cast. It sounds a little narcissistic, but it's not. I promise you guys, I'm not really a self-centered guy too much, but I uh, couldn't come up with a great podcast name. This podcast is mainly about sports, life, and adversity. So let's go ahead and get started with some sports talk today. Today was a great day for uh, the World Cup and the soccer or football community. Uh, argue down below. I'm more of a calling it soccer because I'm from America, obviously. But uh, Argentina takes home the World Cup W. Big ups to Messi and the whole team for uh, beating France. It's a great game. But uh, I'm more of a football guy myself, American football. So I'm going to talk about my two teams, my college and my NFL team. College teams, obviously, the Georgia Bulldogs. I love them dogs. From Georgia, Georgia Bulldogs. So, big dogs fan. Love them. We're 13 0 right now, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. I know we're 12 at the end of the season. 13 0, we just beat the LSU Tigers. So, that was a good win. But we're on to OSU next. I think OSU's going to give us a little bit of trouble, but I still think we're going to come out with a big victory down the stretch. And then we're probably going to play Michigan in the national championship. That game I can see going either way. But I also have to take Georgia because I'm a little biased. So go dogs. And my NFL team, I get a lot of hate for this. It's the Patriots. How can you be a Patriots fan from, from Georgia? You know? How can a guy from Georgia like the New England Patriots? How did that happen? It's a long story, so let's go ahead and get into it. Basically, I went up to my friend's house, best friend's house, uh, for a long time. He's still a good friend of mine, still talk sometimes. But uh, he's a big Atlanta Falcons fan. And we played he wanted me to play Madden so bad and like start to play football. And like get into it, and I hated it. I absolutely hated football for a long time with passion. Like I absolutely like despised. I hated like physical sports and stuff like that. So I was obviously you know a little, little chubby, a little chubby as a kid. And I finally one day you know I was like okay, I'm gonna pick this team. You know I was going through the teams. I'm like okay, what team do I want to select? And I see the Patriots. They've got this red, white, and blue awesome logo. And they're the Patriots, patriotic. I was a very patriotic kid, I guess you could say. So I was like, okay, I'm picking them. I, I would lose like every game. I'd throw like a touchdown and I'd be like, yeah. It was like to Rob Gronkowski or something. I was like, yeah, they're the best team. He obviously hated the Patriots, so he despised me for that. And I'll never forget the story of the 2017 Super Bowl. Obviously, I was a Patriots fan by then. So, you know, I was watching. I was like, get down 28 to 3. I mean, no, not much hope. For the Patriots in that game, I got a lot of you know shit talk, uh, especially by him. He was like, "Patriots suck, y'all are bad. The Falcons are just way better. Y'all lost, ha 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 ha." And a couple other Falcons fans hit me up with the same kind of stuff, and I was like, "Oh, we probably lost, but uh, you know, I'm a humble loser. I mean, we lost. They were the better team. But then just watching Tom Brady in that offense and the defense just come out and make these mesmerizing drives, mesmerizing drives. Sorry." And just come out, score touchdowns, sack Matt Ryan, get the forced fumble. I mean, it was just great. They were uh, apparently the Falcons popping champagne in the locker room. So, you know, celebrating way too early. They were dancing, thinking it was sweet, thinking the game was over. But when you have Tom Brady on the other side, you cannot think the game is over. Speaking of Tom Brady, today he actually just blew like a 17-0 lead. I was just watching it a little while back, December 18th. Uh, they played the Bengals. They're up 17-0, like 17-3, something like that. They blew the game. He threw a couple bad picks. Didn't have the greatest protection in the world, but still threw some uncharacteristic picks and had, you know, like one or two fumbles that were on him. Just not very Tom Brady-esque. So we'll see what happens. He's still down some linemen, and uh, defense is obviously a little shaken up for the Bucks. So big ups to them. I also did watch the Patriots today. <sighs> We blew it. I mean, when it's tied at 24-24, there's 24 seconds left in the game. Ramondre's running up the middle. We're in field goal range. I mean, there's no time left on the clock. So, I mean, you can't really just go down. He ladders it back to Jacoby Myers, who then instead of – there's no time on the clock. We're in their, their uh, territory. There's no time on the clock whatsoever. He could have just stepped out and went to OT. He – he stepped up. He threw that way 30 yards back. Right, It went right into Chandler Jones' hands. 
It cannot like what was he thinking? He can ladder back and he, th- he threw it right back to him. And Chandler Jones is right in front of Mac Jones. Mac Jones tries to stop. He gets stiff armed by Chandler Jones and Chandler Jones was gone. He absolutely cooked Mac Jones and he he turned on the burner. He's got a touchdown. But uh the play bef- the touchdown before that by the Raiders was it was not a touchdown, let's be real. Uh the community was talking about it being a bad call. His foot was stepped out of bounds as he made the catch. He's on the white line. It's not a touchdown. Um, it got reviewed, and they, they upheld the touchdown somehow to Keelan Cole, I think. He was not in, but a fair play to the Raiders. We deserve to lose that game, to be honest. I mean, Mac Jones had 100 yards passing. You're not going to win a game where the quarterback can't pass the ball well. I mean, Ramondre had a great game. The only bright spot on our offense right now, him and some of the linemen, the other linemen are a little shaky. But, uh, yeah, we got a lot of work to do the offseason. We probably just got out of the playoffs with that loss. I mean, because we got Miami, Buffalo, and Cincinnati on the way. Uh, I don't see how we make the playoffs now with that loss, that tough, tough loss. And it's going to be demoralizing for the whole team, I'm sure. Jacoby Myers is going to feel like the worst man in the world. And people are going to hate him for that. I mean, I can't sit here and just put all the blame on him. That was a bad play. But the whole game's done. He made a bunch of good catches that game and crucial catches to keep the drives alive. It's not on my guy. Uh, it's not on Myers, obviously, but it's it's on the team. The defense did play well. They pretty much shut them out the second half as one touchdown. Special teams played shaky. They you know got a blocked punt, led to points, but other than that, I mean, it was actually a pretty decently played game. Everything besides offense, offensively wise, it was pretty bad. A lot of what you used to see with the Patriots, so it's very unfortunate, you know, have to sit through that again and watch. More boring football for the most part. Besides Ramondre, Ramondre, he's the man. You know, we just need to feed him, get him going. Obviously, keep him, keep feeding that man. But uh, yeah, let me let me know. Obviously, if you have any other sports teams or like any other bad things happened today, uh, that happened. So yeah, let me know your teams down below, or uh, if you guys have a favorite team, you know, tweet it out at me. But yeah, let's go into fantasy fantasy football. I'm out here thinking I'm a genius, you know. I drafted, everyone does this too. You think you're a genius. You're drafting some teams. And it just I'm in two paid leagues right now. I'm in a $10 and $35 league. The $35 league, I've lost all hope in. Uh, let me go through my team with you guys right here. My $35 league, I'm down 100 points right now. And all my players have played. All their players have played. I've got Justin Herbert. Got eight points this week. Get 300 yards though, so let's see. Jonathan Taylor. Zero rushing yards. He got hurt, obviously, in the the travesty of Matt Ryan part two. He got hurt early on. I I mean, what do you want me to do? Can't do much about that. Miles Sanders fumbled. He had 42 yards. He had like zero carries for a while. I don't know what they were doing. Mike Evans got 13 points. I mean, typical. Tyler Lockett, the flex player. Or my second receiver, no. Okay. He broke like a bone in his finger. He's going to be out for a while. He got 13 points. Mark Andrews. He's getting six points. He's just not been the same. Started CP this week. He got 12. Vikings D got me four. And then Tucker got me three. He missed two field goals that game. My bench is not too good. I've got Marquise Brown, Bucks D, Nick Folk, which I probably should have started. Then Marcus Robinson, Taysom Hill. Uh, Got two Texans players. Which I have Chris Moore, and then I won't even try to name this guy. He's a Houston running back, Dare. Uh, his last name starts with an O. But this one's a 12 man league, it's a deeper league. When I when we first started this, I mean, I had like the best team, I feel like, outright. Beginning of the year, you know, I had Taylor. I was like, okay. Week one went really, really well. I started off like 6 and 0. Now I'm 8 and 6, down 100 points in the playoffs. I actually, no, it's a single elimination right here. So I'm dead out, you know what I mean? I'm out of the playoffs. It's not no uh, two-week thing. I'm I'm out. I am for sure out of the playoffs, so that sucks. $35 uh, gone. But it was fun, though. Fantasy's fun. You can play with your friends. Now it's my $10 league. The league that uh, right now I'm down 40, 40-ish points. I've got Terry McLaurin left, but this is a two-week thing. My team lineup is Justin Fields, QB1, McCaffrey. I've got Mixon, who underperformed pretty bad this week. Got 21 rushing yards. Diggs, 
underperformed as well. I've got Chris Godwin, had a pretty good game in uh, in Tampa. Gerald Everett's my tight end. He did all right. I mean, I'll probably drop him soon. I've got two more tight ends that I'm planning on bringing up. Terry McLaurin's my flex player. He hasn't played yet, but right now I've got 109 points. He hasn't played yet. Cowboys D. Oh, what happened, Cowboys? I, what happened, Cowboys? Really? James Draws should have came for y'all, and I hope he did. What happened? They were up, I think, like 21-7. They were up. I remember they were up. I don't know what the exact score was, but they were up. The Cowboys D got an interception, two fumbles recoveries, and 34 points allowed. They got zero points, but the Bucks allowed 34 points as well, only an interception, and they have five points. So that's that was weird. Strange. Jason Myers is my kicker. He got nine points. Pretty reliable kicker. I've got DJ Moore on the bench. Deontay Johnson on the bench. They had two pretty good games. I've got Jamison Williams, who I probably will drop. I was looking forward to seeing him in the playoffs if he can make some leaps or have, you know, some good games. He didn't do too hot. I've got Gibson on my bench. Zonovan Knight. I've got Cole Komet. Brady. And I've got Darren Wall on my IR spot, but I'm going to bring him up next week. Because he had a decent game in New England his first week back. I mean, what do you want the guy to do? Not too much he could have done. But I just got uh I just feel like my team just underperforms when it matters. In this league, I'm ten and four. I've got another week to uh hopefully score a lot more points. I have not really any favorable matchups besides, you know, Brady at Arizona. Fields plays Buffalo. Brady's at Arizona. I'm torn on who's start because I mean I'm gonna be down a lot. So I feel like the play is definitely Justin Fields just to kind of get going because he can have those games where usually he averages 20 points, but he can go through sometimes and he can get 40 points out of nowhere. You know what I mean? Just a couple touchdowns. He can throw some picks. He'll get the points. I mean, it doesn't really matter for him. He's more of like a, he can just kind of break a tackle, go all the way as we saw obviously today. Fields is that guy. Uh, Justin Fields is going to be a great quarterback at the NFL. I, along with a lot of people, slandered him for a while. You know, his completion rate and uh, his accuracy has been pretty bad. But he, the man has no help. He's got no help at receiver at all. I mean, even today, his uh, starting receiver, St. Brown, he literally got hurt. He got hurt, like, in the first half. So, other than that, I mean, Fields has Cole Komet. He's a pretty good young tight end, but a tight end relying on the – Justin Fields to get him the ball. It's just not tight ends get some catches unless you're like obviously one of the greatest tight ends like Travis Kelsey. You get the ball, you know, a little bit, a couple receptions a game, and that's it. So there's not much, you know, they can just change the game too much unless they're a Travis Kelsey type where they're open almost all the time. You know, they're not covered as well. Travis Kelsey doesn't cover well. He just he's just that guy. He just gets open. It doesn't matter who's on Travis Kelsey. He's going to break away, you know. Honestly, in fantasy, probably should have drafted Travis Kelsey first overall. I mean, he is the clear tight end of the year. And he honestly averages a lot of points at a, such a scarce position that you need the points at. But getting away from fantasy and uh, sports, we're going to just like some of my life right now. What I'm going through, I'm in college, I'm 19. And uh, yeah, I just changed my major, actually. I was a chemistry major, but I just changed to exercise science. And uh, my first semester were pretty well. I've all A's. I think I had one or two B's. But other than that, all A's. Classes were pretty fun. And uh, had pretty small class sizes. Left like 20, 26, 30. And uh, I took chemistry, chemistry seminar, chemistry lab. I had philosophy. And I had, I'm trying to think. I had calculus. But I dropped calculus. Calculus was... Honestly, one of the reasons also I switched my majors because I'm like, eh, do I really want to go through Calc and Calc 2? Had a, a rough professor. I was like, uh, I don't know if this is for me, you know. I don't know if Calc's for me. I was going to the learning center and getting help on my assignments, and I'd, I'd still get like 70s on them. So I was like, I'm, I don't think I'll be able to do this, you know what I mean? So I got out of there, and it made life way easier. Chemistry was hard as it is, but having Calc on top of chemistry made it just 10 times worse. So... Got out of there, and my classes went pretty smooth after that. Philosophy is a fun class. Like, just sitting there, like, reading is not as fun, and, like, just doing a reading post, I mean, it's not that bad. Sometimes you have, like, a paper, which is, like, 500 words. It's not it's not terrible at all. I mean, the work's easy, 
but just like the conversations you get in the class are great like philosophy like the wills your will you know what it means to be a good person and just like challenging some views it's just a great experience if you guys have a class like that i'd encourage you to take it just for fun and you might like it you know i liked it pretty much i don't think i'm gonna like take another class in there but i, I for sure enjoyed it you know i mean chemistry it wasn't as hard i don't think everyone's the learning center for chemistry because i'm i was just good at chemistry i don't know what it is but uh i like it it's just not i don't think it's what i want to do you know that's why i decided to switch to exercise science so next semester i'm taking nutrition and medical terminology online i don't know how that's gonna be i don't know if it's gonna be hard easy but uh, we're gonna find out <laughs> and i'm taking music and like this critical thinking class which i don't know why that got me in music and critical thinking I don't know why I'm taking music, but I have to. It's it's like required. So it's, it's going to be, I assume, pretty boring. And I'm also taking politics and society, but I've heard that class is pretty easy. A lot of common sense you know, and stuff of that nature to go through with and uh, discuss. But I'm not too worried about any of my classes that I'm taking. Outside of maybe the online ones that like medical terminology and... Uh, nutrition just because i've never had a class like that uh those subjects and they're online i've taken some dual enrollment classes though so it'll probably be similar to those i've had microeconomics online taken i got exempt from english 1101 because of ap credit so i did 1102 i did it in person at my high school it's offered it was a pretty good teacher so we got that through pretty easily i had like an a in there i'm pretty sure I took uh, college algebra and uh, what's it called? College pre-calculus in class there with a teacher. So that was awesome. That was amazing. I would not in college classes are probably what two, three times harder than they were in high school. Taking them dual enrolled, the content is probably a lot more. You learn more. The tests are probably harder. Because I had a pretty good uh, math teacher as well. I took her for also my EP stats class. And I ended up passing. So I don't have to take stats. Don't have to take algebra. Don't have to take, you know, pre-calculus. So I don't have another math class for a while, I think, in my college career. So I'm uh, very glad about that. Math is, uh, I hate math. But I'm always decent at it, you know. Putting the time in, really. It's all about putting the time in. Getting practice. So... Yeah, hopefully we do that, and uh, hopefully my classes go well next semester. I'm excited to get back. Intramural is also a big part of college. Intramural are fun. I really, <laughs> and the only intramural I really do are football. I'm a big football guy, big flag football guy. So I'm excited for those to come back, have some fun, some friends, and score some touchdowns, get some interceptions, you know, all that good stuff. But uh, yeah, I also think about getting a tattoo soon. So if you guys have any recommendations, let me down down. If you guys have any recommendations, let me know down below, please. Uh, I'm thinking about getting like something with a sword or an arrow. I'm obviously not 100% sure yet, so I'm just thinking of ideas, trying to get it down before I go. Obviously, I don't want to get something random on my body because it's going to be permanent. I want to be cool. I want it to mean something, and I don't know when I'm going to get it, but I want to get one on my leg, like my right leg going down. I just feel like that'd be sick. And yeah, honestly, also there's like this boxing club starting next semester. I'm a, I'm a big boxing guy. I love it. Love the sport. I'm a novice at it. I'm like a mid. I'm, I'm a mid boxer. You know what I mean? I just haven't sparred in a while, but I train it. I practice it. And yeah, I just haven't sparred in a while. So we'll see what happens there. I'm excited. Um, I might take some boxing classes in the summer with some friends and uh, be some content on my main channel. Zach Ward vlogs. You can look that up. You find me. It's just Zach Ward, but there's obviously a more famous guy right now uh, who's in the Christmas story. So yeah, let's let's overtake that man soon with the Zach Cast. <laughs> Zach Cast is available also on YouTube. It should be on Apple Music, Spotify. So if you're not following on there, go follow on all those apps. Depending on what you like to listen to your podcasts on, it's obviously your preference. We'll see how they're up. I don't know quite how I'm going to set up to where they release all at the same time. So it's going to be some experimenting. These first few podcasts are going to be probably like eh, posted at random times. <laughs> all three of them, uh, like 
separately to the different uh I'm thinking uh apps and softwares but uh, i'm going to test it out we're going to see what goes on how it works and if you guys have any recommendations for that let me know down below let me know over time i'm going to try and increase the studio what we're doing this is going to be like the studio for probably a week or two because i'm going back i'm obviously home now for winter break I probably should have mentioned that i will be going home or not going home <laughs> i'll be going back january 8th or 9th so i don't know what the studio will be it'll probably just be me in my dorm room with my macbook so i've obviously got to get that set up taken back there i've got to get some equipment to have my microphone in my macbook because i know there's not a port for it there I gotta get my uh, webcam as well so that's gonna be tricky to do because obviously the the mac webcam is is bad i've looked at it it's, it's not great this webcam i actually do need to upgrade my webcam it says it's an HD 1080p, but I, I don't buy that. I don't think it's as high quality as it says. It's a Logitech, but I got it years back, though, so I can't really complain. It's years old. It still looks decent. It's going to get upgraded soon, so it's not really a biggie for me. But also, speaking of future podcasts, we have some future guests on the podcast soon. The next few podcasts, I think episode two, we've got a raid coming on here. The GOAT, if you followed my career online, you know of the boy, Raid from uh, TGCG and just all around Young Money Clan and whatnot. They've got uh, Inco Guardian and maybe Inco Buggy coming on. Some of the homies for a while. It'd also be good just to talk to them. You know, I haven't talked to Buggy or uh, Guardian in a minute, so that'd be great. If you guys have any other uh, guests you'd like to see on here that I know, or if you want to be on the podcast, let me know. Just let me know. I'm always open. If you have something cool to share, or something interesting to talk about that people would like to see, just let me know. I mean, I'm all ears. I'm not going to like be like, oh, you have to have this amount of followers. You have to have you know, this, that, because everyone starts somewhere. I obviously am not famous, so I can't go around acting like, you know, a prick and, you know, being mean to other people. It's not me, and it's, uh, I don't have that status at all to do that. But yeah, we got some guests coming on. It's going to be awesome. We're going to talk about, you know, some of the good old times. Some interesting moments, you know, adversities they had to go through and stuff like that. You know, just fun times, uh, reliving some memories because I I love the good old days. As you guys know, everyone I'm sure loves the good old days, loves some nostalgia. And speaking of some past times, let's go ahead and get to more of like a, a hard past time for me. Uh, it's COVID year. A lot of people had bad, bad memories of COVID year. Whether it's losing loved ones, you know, losing yourself, uh, your mind, you know, you know, your intelligence, anything like that. I mean, it was a tough year, a really tough year on everybody. And I'm, I'm sorry if anyone dealt with anything crazy or outlandish or out of the norm of their actual life, a hard loss. You know, I'm very sorry to happen to you, uh, but I ended up eating a lot, you know, cope to eat to cope. And uh, I actually got up to 232 pounds. It was crazy. I didn't even think I was that fat. But looking back and seeing videos, it's like, oh, I was fat. You know what I mean? I was, I was fat. Uh, didn't ever realize it till I like stepped on a scale. I was like, 232 pounds? I was like, what? It can't be right. But I was, and I, I didn't realize it. You know, I didn't. Because when you look at yourself in the mirror, you don't really, you, the change happens slowly. You don't notice it at all. You're like, oh, me, and me. Um, until people don't see you in a while, see you, and they're like, oh, you changed, man. You know, you, you put on some extra pounds, which I wouldn't have a problem with anyone saying that to me. You know, obviously I did. I want the truth. I want, you know, whether it's tough or without a love. Um, I mean, just the truth. I mean, I was fat. And I was like, I'm going to make a change, you know. I don't want to be fat, you know. I I want to I want to be you know fit feel good about myself. I mean I'm still on that journey now. I mean I people think I'm fit or whatnot. I don't I don't think I'm fit. You know it's just tough. Obviously you know you always look back and you see yourself still as what you used to be in the mirror. Body dysmorphia. I think I have that. I think a lot of people have that. But you still look at yourself and you're like, Ugh, why do I look like this? You know why am I why am I fat? You know I still think I'm fat. I don't. I don't like, I don't actually think I'm fat, but like sometimes like I'm kind of fat still, even though I lost over like 60 pounds, 
at one point. I lost 60, 60 of the pounds I lost. And I really did that by cutting out a lot of like the food, the snacks, just the unnecessary things. I was sitting in my bed doing schoolwork all day. I was like, okay, how can I get out of this 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 dark spot of my life? And I was like, I'm going to do something I love. I love football. I played football for like a year. Uh, you know, I played D-line and tight end. So I was like, I'm going to practice some routes. You know, just catching some routes, having some fun every day for like 30 minutes. And it was tough starting. It was tough to just run out by myself, throw the ball to myself, which is what I did for the majority of the time. So that's what I do. Throw the ball to myself, work on my hands a little bit. And after a while, I, I noticed I'm losing some weight, you know? I'm losing some weight. So I was like, on top of that, I'm going to do a little workout before it, you know, lift some weights down in the basement. Had a couple of, you know, a couple pounds down the lift. So every day I'd be like, I'd hit chest one day, I'd hit legs one day, hit, you know, arms, all that good stuff, shoulders, whatnot. And I just, like, it was fun. It became fun. The gym is fun. And losing weight ended up becoming like a journey, you know. I had to eat well, obviously. I ate mainly tuna and rice, like every night. Eat me some good old tuna, 70 calories, 17 grams of protein. It was like a dollar. And then just some rice, you know. Rice is good put some parmesan cheese in there it's underrated get you guys some parmesan cheese and put it in the rice it's it makes it way better than having bland rice i never mixed the tuna and the rice because i feel like that would just be nasty and also have the tuna juice that tuna juice lethal man you do not want to drink that you do not want to you do not want to drink that at all man but yeah i was i was feeling good i was in the gym or hitting downstairs. Then I finally got a, a gym membership. And I started going there. Doing some more exercises that I couldn't do at home. And also like. I saw boxing. Like I watched boxing for a little bit. And I was like oh I kind of want to box. Let me see how much it would be to like go to a boxing gym. And then we found this guy. Pretty cool trainer. I'm not going to disclose any of the names or anything like that. But I trained there for like three months. And that helped me lose weight as well. Boxing. I was lifting weights and running around. I'd run 5Ks every now and then, like twice a week. I'd say, just go run, you know, kind of be with myself in my thoughts and some music. Go run, have a good time. And then boxing was just, boxing was cool. Like starting off, you think you're fit. You're not, even right now, I'm not boxing fit. It's hard to get boxing fit. You have to be really committed to be boxing fit. And it's hard. A lot of boxers aren't boxing fit until the day of their fight you know what i mean like there's always much more you can do you know there's a whole lot you can do obviously on top of what you're doing currently to be boxing fit you know run miles every day and stuff like that but i fell in love with boxing for a while i really just i loved it and it just came a grind to get better you know i looked at my old footage of me you know just punching and it was terrible I'd be like, I used to think I could throw a punch, but now I'm like, oh, I didn't know how to punch. You know, that punch would have done nothing to somebody. Now I can punch. I can turn straight shots. I can hook. I can do all that stuff. I've learned a lot. And, you know, a lot of a lot of it's footwork and balance and, you know, getting the right uh, stance, which I did make a series on my YouTube channel, Boxing for Beginners. It did pretty decent. I haven't made another episode of it because I've been really busy with school. Obviously, college is a big time commitment, too. And it's not really having, like, the space to record it at college. They have, like, one bag in a, in a gym. Like, there's not really a place where I can, you know, be like, okay, here's how you work this. Let's uh, teach you how to use this. I would have to have somebody with me to show you how to hit other shots. I do have some pads. I've had some fun um, hitting some pads, testing out how to use pads on other people. So that was fun. But yeah, just the whole the whole grind of boxing is like it's really mental and it's a lonely sport. There's no one there, there's not a team with you there besides obviously your coach. And that's really it. It's just you, your coach, but mainly you putting in the work, going down there into that dark mindset to just, you know, hit people, not get hit. Have fun, honestly. Like boxing, if you have fun with boxing, it's fun. You know, I mean I like to have fun with my uh, my boxing be loose, you know, all that stuff, and uh, it's weird, like, 
you don't feel it like when you're sparring you don't you don't feel like the shots until later like later that day like when like one day i left i was like oh, i feel great and it was like later i was like oh i feel terrible my arm hurts my head hurts i'm dizzy uh but there's one time i got rocked hard by this guy and he was like a mike tyson approach you know peekaboo and i he got close i went to clinch him and he like slips under it and like unleashes like a hook right <laughs> right to my head and i was like oh i got rocked but i stayed up and finish the round off actually pretty well. I think I uh, did decent, but obviously there's no winner or loser in sparring. Seeing that shot, though, did help me learn. I can't just go over and clinch somebody like that every time because I did it earlier and it worked, but at that time he caught on and, yeah, he rocked me. But uh, it was fun, though. Like, sparring's fun. You just always have to be protected and, like, know what you're doing. Have a good coach who can, you know, see you don't need to be in there and get you out. But other than that, I mean, boxing is fun, man. I encourage you guys all to do something in your life to get you out of your comfort zone as well. Comfort zone is like the worst place you can be forever, staying comfortable with where you are. Get out of there. Get in the uncomfortable zone for sure. It's uh, maybe uncomfortable for a while, but you will grow. You will gain so much new knowledge and so much potential that it's just not worth it to be comfortable anymore. Be uncomfortable. Be uncomfortable. My message of this podcast, be uncomfortable in the comfortable. Find comfort in the uncomfortable. Find it. That's what I'm challenging you guys to do. Uh, Whether it's go say hey to somebody, meet new people, work out for the first time, box for the first time, play a sport for the first time. Whatever it is, start start a business, start a YouTube channel. Start a podcast. Just do it, man. That's my advice to you guys. I'm going to leave you guys with that. And with that being said, the first episode of the Zach Cast. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to uh, rate, leave a like, comment, subscribe, whatever you guys want to follow. And I'll see you guys in the next, next podcast. Peace.